I'm going to show you how to use link in C sharp. So I'm going to start with a windows form app and I'll call this my bank. And I'll go ahead and create the project. Now in this project, I need to have data in order to use link. So I'm going to start by creating a couple classes. So you control shift a, and I will create a class for people. So maybe I'll just call this a person person. And I'm going to do another one. I uh, call this one account. And then I'll create another one. And I'll call this one owner. All right, so each one of these ties to the tables that I'm going to be creating, actually a list, so we can use link. So the person class, I'm going to make it a public class, public class, and the public person class needs to have a couple of attributes. So I'll start with a public um, you int, it could be an int or you int, but person ID. And I have a getter and a setter for this. Then I'm going to have a public you, let's see, public um, string name. And I'll have a getter and a setter. And you can have more information about the person, but I'm just going to do some basic, basic people. So I've got a person ID and it's got a name and that's it. So that one's done. I'll go next to my account. Make the account once again a public class. And then in this account, I'm going to go ahead and have a public you int. This will be in my account ID. And I'll have a getter and a setter for that. And then I'm going to have a, maybe an account type. So I'll call it a string account type and I'll have a getter and a setter for that and then I'll have a public uh, let's do a double balance and I'll have a getter and a setter for that all right so now this one is basically done and now I'm going to make a public owner and this one's going to link the two tables together. So I'm going to have a public you int, and this will be person ID, and I'll have a getter and a setter, and I'll have a public you int account ID, and a getter and a setter. All right. Now, in order to make these things really useful, you probably want to have constructors. So I'll go ahead and make constructors for each one. So start with a person and whenever I create a new person, it will be a public person and I pass in a you int person ID and string name. Then I will just go ahead and set those values internally. So person ID equals person ID and name equals name. So that is done. Go to my account, same thing, I want a constructor here. So I will do public account and I'll pass in the uint account ID string Account, actually let's do it all the case. Right there, account type and double balance. You'll note that I will I'm doing these things in different cases so that'll match the ones that are currently there. So my account ID equals the account ID and my account type equals the account type and then the balance equals the balance all right so now i've got that one done 
the last one I'm going to go ahead and create the constructor for this one as well so public owner and I'm going to pass in a uint person ID lowercase person ID and a uint account ID and I'm going to set them in here so person ID equals person ID and account ID equals account ID. All right. So these things are done. Now I want to have some kind of a database to access these. So I'll do a control shift A and I'll create a class called, well, database. You probably want something a little better than that, but I'll make this a public static class. I don't want it to be non-static because I want to have it be useful and used everywhere and keep track of all of my data. So I want to have a public and this one is going to have a list of all of the data. So I have a public static list of type. Let's go with a person and I'll call this one people and equals a new list person and there we go and I'll do a public static list and this one is account so I'll call it accounts equals new list so what I'm doing here is I'm making it so that these people accounts and the next one which will probably be owners are all basically like they feel like SQL tables and I will show you how that works in a moment when I do link so new list owner now none of these tables or none of these lists have any data in them so I'm going to create a public initialization function so public static void uh, init data function and this functions main purpose is to get stuff into these different tables so I got populate people Populate accounts and populate owners. Now, ideally, you'd have this data somehow connected to a database or something, but we're going to go ahead and just make our own data right here. So I can do people add, and then I can use a new person constructor to create my person so I'll do person number one is going to be well, let's go ahead and copy this line so I can make multiple people so I'll make five people so one two three four and five so this would be Alice aqua marine this would be Bob the um, Boxer, and this will be uh, Charles, Charles, just Charles, and this one will be Dave or Sarah, and this one will be Eve Evergreen. All right, so now I've got five people names and I want to go ahead and create some accounts so I do accounts add new account and this is why we really want the constructors because it makes it so much easier to well create things so do one comma and then a 
account type. And so maybe I'll do checking. Let's go sell it, sell it differently. Checking. And then I want to have a balance of, let's say, $100. And I'll make a bunch of accounts here. So maybe account one and two, three, four, five, six, seven. And let's make this one right here a savings. And maybe account five is also a savings. And let's change the amount of money in each one so they don't look the same. All right, now I need owners. Owners add, and I need to have a owner followed by a owner followed by an account number. So let's do one comma one. So put Alice as the owner of the first account. And Let's say Alice gets to have two accounts, so she can have the first two accounts, and then each other person gets to have one account. All right, and then the last one, I guess, is not owned by anybody. All right, so now I've got this data all pre-populated and ready to go. And in order to actually populate it, I need to run the init data function. So how do I run that? Well, let's go over to my design and I've got this form right here. Let's change the form text and we'll make it the bank search. So I'm going to make a search so you can search for stuff. All right. And if I double click this right here, it allows me to have this form one load. So in this form one load, I can tell it that when the form first loads up, I want to run the database initialization init data function and that's done so that loads the data in the database now if i go back to my form design i can now put things on to my page i want to have a list box because it's kind of fun to just throw data on there so i'll throw it into this list box and then i want to have a search box so i'll call that my search box but we get a text box right here and then let's make it a little bigger and then I'm gonna have a button so that I can take this button and use the button to look up data let's put it right here move this one over a bit and there we go and I can take this thing and I can shrink it a little bit so that it doesn't look as ugly all right, now I changed my text right here, the text box, I'm gonna rename it. So I find the name somewhere. Probably. Right around somewhere, oh, here it is right at the top. And I call it TXT search. And then I'm gonna have this button right here. I'll call it btn search so it's the button for the search and the text for the search and the button's text is going to say search if i can find that there we go so what i want to do is have it search for all the accounts with that person's name in them so let's go ahead and double click on the search button now and it's got this text right here all right, so when this application loads, it will automatically initialize and load the data into the database. So then all of those tables are basically ready, but they're not tables, they're just their lists. So I want to have this, back on the form, I've got this list box and I'll call the list box something other than list box. So I'll change it to, so LST, uh, result LST result so LST result now when I click the search box 
I wanted to clear it and then put the new results on it. So the LST result items clear. And now I want to perform my link query. So this is the point we've been getting to. This is what we've been working at. We wanted to create our data so we could actually do the link query. So now I will do a var results. And this result is going to be from, let's see, it would be maybe a person in database.people. And then I want to join it because I want to be able to get all these all the data together. So I do join join uh, owner in database owners. And I need to join it on people dot actually person dot uh, on the person id equals you type should type of the word equals and then owner dot person id and then i want to join it to the account table as well so the accounts in database Accounts, and this one I'm going to join on the owner dot account ID being equals to the account account ID. Now I've got my joins in place. Now I want to decide if I want to do any additional searching type stuff, and so I want to put a where clause in there. So where and this is person and I want to do for names. So name dot um, contains and I want to contain the query information. So at this point I'll go up here and I'll figure out what was the query. So I will do a string my search equal to my txt search dot text so it's going to grab the text that's in the txt search and it's going to use that search right here as my search and then when i have that done i want to do a select so i'll do a select new and i want to have in this new row i want my person name I want the account um, ID and um, let's also do, we could do the account type, but let's do the account balance because that's all we really care about. And then I have a semicolon here. At this point, this statement can run and I can then use that result. So I'm going to use that result and I will fill the list box so i'll do that with a for each statement so for each do a var result in results so the results right there and what i want to do i want to take each one of these results and put it into that list box and the list box is called lst result lst result and so I'm going to um, use the items and add. Um, I could probably just take my result and I could print it or format it in some way. So let's go ahead and just make a two string. It's not very pretty, but it will get the job done and it will be easy to tell if it's working correctly. So I'm going to save that. And now I'm going to run this program. So it brings up this program right here and 
so let's say we want to look up Alice. If we search for Alice, it finds there are two records that have Alice Aquamarine. Account one with a balance of $100 plus an account two with a balance of $200. And I can change this to um, Dave and do a search. And then we got Dave Rosera with an account ID of five, balance $500. I can change it to Eve. And then Eve shows up. So you can see how this link code right here is performing a query. And that query result is then being passed down into this for each statement, which is then putting it into the list box. And that is how to use link.